There has been a lot of talk about Fed now and Ripple, as well as rumors about whether or not Ripple will join this project. Video will show a conversation I had earlier today about whether or not Ripple was taking part in the Fed now with an ad program. How Ripple would be connected to the Fed now if I'd like to share those results with you in this video before talking about the potential size of the whole industry and the brand new. Many people, in my view, grossly underestimate how much money will come into this new financial system. Make sure to watch the whole video to find out, because you won't want to miss it. I also want to talk briefly about some setbacks at the SEC, especially since I think it's less likely that the Supreme Court will take up the Ripple SEC case. I'd like to start this video by quickly talking about some of the SEC's setbacks in the ongoing court case. Ripple released this information a few months ago, but it looks like the rest of the cryptocurrency business is just now catching up. Jake Kavinsky is here, in a sense. He seems to be part of the blockchain association, and he points out that Gary Gensler has already said that every cryptocurrency is a security. This means that Gary Gensler has already decided what the status of every cryptocurrency on the market will be. Gary Gensler is one of the SEC commissioners, and he is meant to vote on whether or not to bring an enforcement action and whether or not a token is a security. He is not allowed to act that way, and he is not allowed to do that. The law says that Gary Gensler shouldn't be able to vote because of this. On future police cases, because it's clear he's not impartial if he's already made up his mind about all of Gary Gensler, will now pay attention to these coins. I doubt if he even gives a Gary Gensler is probably just going to laugh at something like this, because, in my opinion, he's happy enough just getting rid of as many trolls as he can. However, it's just one more thing that will make Gary Gensler have to deal with resistance. It's one more thing that might make him want to leave the SEC sooner, but I think it shows most of all what kind of person Gary Gensler is. Gary Gensler is always guilty of small mistakes like this one keep. Don't forget that Gary Gensler isn't a lawyer, so it's reasonable that he would make mistakes like this. Just think back to when he first took over as SEC chairman. At a hearing before Congress, he pretty much told the truth and said that the SEC didn't have the power to control cryptocurrencies. He knew right away that he had made a mistake and tried to fix it. This is the only reason I brought up Gary Gensler's claims in the first place, but when it comes down to it, a lot of what he says isn't even backed by the law. I think it's happened a lot in the Bitcoin business, and everyone needs to understand that everything Harry Gensler says is true. He also has no legal experience and is just giving his own opinion. Before we talk about the FED now material, I'd like to say something else. Jew Barrett said this, among other things, about something else. I don't want this movie to get political, but if you've been paying attention to the Supreme Court lately, you may have noticed that they've made a lot of really brave decisions. The Supreme Court is not afraid to change or get rid of the Howey test in a big way. Varick tweeted earlier today, and it's important to remember that another thing that happened today. The SEC is playing with fire, which is why it would be a big deal if the Supreme Court heard a case about cryptocurrencies. Right now, the SEC's only hope, if they lose the Ripple case, is that it is in a low-level court and won't have a big impact on other courts. This means that the SEC may still be able to call other cryptocurrencies securities as long as the case is heard in the same court. But if they lost the Ripple action, the SEC might be in a very bad position if it decides to take this case to the Supreme Court. Because the SEC gets most of its power from the Howey test, it would be good if the Howey tests were more exact. At the Supreme Court level, and since we have seen that the Supreme Court is happy to make these very strong decisions, this could severely limit the power of the courts. The fact that the test covers so much helps the SEC even more. The SEC can pretty much use it for anything and say it works here. If this is security, it would be a huge loss for the SEC and maybe a chance they are not willing to take if a cryptocurrency case went to the Supreme Court and the court changed how we test to make it more accurate to better protect investors. Define what security is and isn't. Overall, I think this is good news because it shows that the SEC doesn't have a good reason to let this happen. The Supreme Court will hear the case. I have a feeling that the SEC will try to stop this case from going forward in the future 
no matter what Judge Tory decides. So, let's talk about Fed and Ripple and the fact that this isn't my study. Why I think this part is so interesting. I was just having a conversation with a computer program. Just so you know, I was using Google's Bard Artificial Intelligence program. This is interesting because the Google Bar is known for being very accurate. Google says that the most relevant as of March 2023, the following businesses have said they are working with the FED. The only question I asked Google Bard was what companies are working with the FED now, which I found very interesting. About the result I'm about to tell you, and here's what it said as of March 2023 Pfizer, the Jack Henry firm. Ripple Synapse Phi Antimonos has said that it is connected to Fedno ACI worldwide. It's important to remember that the list of businesses incorporated with the Fed right now is not complete. More businesses are likely to join the FED now. As the network grows, people will connect and offer services to make fast payments easier. What I found so interesting about what it just told me was that it didn't make me want to ask about Ripple or XRP. I asked you for a list of businesses that work with Now and Google. Bard made sure to point out that Ripple works with Fed. What role does Ripple play in the Fed? Now he says that Ripple is a business that makes blockchain-based payment technology that will be combined with FedNow, a new quick payment system that the Federal Reserve is making. Ripple is one of many companies that have been asked to help make the system, but it has not yet been chosen as a technology provider for FedNet to make a FedNow prototype that uses the RippleNet network. Ripple has been working with the Federal Reserve to make this happen. RippleNet, a global network of financial institutions, uses blockchain technology from Ripple to make and receive payments from over 70 different countries. The network is already used by banks and other places that deal with money. If RippleNet was picked as a technology partner, banks and other financial institutions that use FedNow would be able to send and receive instant payments through it. This would make it easier for banks to connect to FedNow. It's important to remember that the Fed has not yet picked Ripple as its official technology partner. This means that banks can't use Ripple to offer instant payment services to their clients. The Federal Reserve is still looking at different tools, so it's not clear which business will be most successful. Even if Ripple isn't picked as a technical partner, it may still be able to help make the Fed. -ed. Ripple has a lot of experience making blockchain-based tools, and the Federal Reserve might be able to learn something from it. And the whole thing. Ripple is a business that is in a good position to help the Federal Reserve grow because it has the knowledge, experience, and skills to help the Fed make a safer and faster payment system. So, guys, if you want to help the Fed grow, you should buy shares in Ripple. Okay, tell me about how Ripple is being used. I find this very interesting, and I'll give you my theory on it. I think that a few of these service providers will help build the FedNow system. Ripple might play a more specific role in cross-border and foreign payments, while Temenos might play a more important role. In any case, local payments are just about sending money from one person to another. It's great that Ripple is listed as one of the companies working closely with the Federal Reserve on this program. And the fact that it's going to be one of the top providers shows that we're not dealing with a random, small fintech company. Instead, we're dealing with a business that is actively changing the world, since all we talked about in that video was payments. I'd like to wrap up by talking about one more thing, but this. The new financial system is much more complicated than just a way to make payments. Classes of assets have been turned into tokens. This morning, Kevin Cage sent out a tweet. Swift says that the value of all tokenized assets could be as much as $24 trillion. VCG thinks that by 2027, the number of liquid assets that could be turned into tokens could hit $16 trillion or even $68 trillion. This is what I'm reading because a new financial system is about to be put in place. As we watch the rush, these platforms will have to grow a lot to handle the huge amount of money that is being pumped into them. To tokenize these assets in public blockchains, but guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please remember to like and follow.